Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan, and today we're tackling DVT, which stands for deep vein thrombosis. As always, let's jump in with our practice question. Remember to save what you think the right answer is for the end, where we will circle back and see if you got it right. So the nurse is caring for a post-operative client two days following abdominal surgery. On assessment, the client reports a dull ache in their right calf and a funny feeling in the toes. What should the nurse do next? So your next action. Should it A, elevate the client's leg by placing a pillow under the ankles and telling them to drink more water? B, telling the client to stay in bed, contacting the PCP, and reporting those assessment findings? C, should you instruct the client to rub or massage their legs to help stimulate blood flow? Or D, should you encourage the client to ambulate and educate them on the dangers of prolonged bed rest? All right, keep that tucked away. Let's go ahead and dive in to deep vein thrombosis. So for the rest of the episode, I'm just going to call that DVT. That's what you're going to hear in practice. First, let's zoom out to the whole anatomy picture here. All right, you've got your veins. These are kind of like a series of highways carrying blood back to the heart. Unlike arteries, veins don't have strong muscular walls to keep blood moving forward. Instead, they rely on valves. So another little memory trick to drop in, V for veins, V for valves. Veins have valves, arteries don't. Okay. So they rely on these valves. They're like little one-way doors and the squeezing action of surrounding muscles, especially the calves in the legs, push blood upwards against gravity and the valves stop the blood from flowing back. That's how we have one-way blood flow and get that blood back to our heart where it needs to go. So now I want you to picture a client laying in bed for days after surgery. When a client is just lying there and they get little movement, those muscles, like in the calves, they're not squeezing and the valves aren't getting that usual workout that they get. So blood starts to pool in those deep veins of the legs and blood that isn't moving. So stagnant blood, that's like a pond. It's just going to kind of sit there and start clumping together. It's much more likely to clot. And this is where a DVT can happen. There are three factors known often as Virchow's triad that when they come together, make a DVT more likely. And the first is what we just talked about, venous stasis. Fancy word for that blood isn't really moving through the veins. We've got sluggish blood flow often from immobility. So it's pooling and it's more likely to clot. The second factor in Virchow's triad is endothelial injury. So damage to a vessel wall. Maybe that's the surgery someone just had or trauma, or it could even be a central line, whatever it is. We get a little damage inside that vessel wall. That's the endothelium. And that is the second factor in Virchow's triad. Third is hypercoagulability. So when the blood itself is stickier and more likely to clot, which can happen after surgery if we get dehydrated or in just certain medical conditions. So those three things line up, venous stasis, endothelial injury, hypercoagulability, and the risk of a clot, a DVT, really goes up. So now let's say we've got a clot. What happens then? While the clot itself can block blood flow in the leg, leading to swelling, redness, warmth, and pain. Those are the big symptoms of a DVT we're going to come back to time and time again in this episode. Some clients describe it as a dull ache or like a heaviness in the calf, but the real danger is if that clot breaks loose and travels. Because once it is on the move, it heads straight up to the lungs, and that can cause a pulmonary embolism, a PE. You guys know that is life-threatening. If we get a clot in the lungs, that is a really big deal, hence why DVTs are such a big deal in nursing. We can go from my leg feels funny to a massive critical emergency super fast. 
Now, it's important to know not every DVT is super dramatic. Some are silent. They have minimal symptoms. So nurses have to stay sharp and monitor those post-off clients. If they are immobile, that is a risk factor for a DVT. Other risk factors are obesity, advanced age, prior clots, cancer, or hormone therapy, things that can increase the coagulability of our blood, how likely it is to clot. Okay, so let's tie that up together. Big takeaway here. We've got our veins. They are low pressure highways bringing the blood back to the heart. Because they're low pressure, they depend on movement to keep the traffic flowing. That's our muscles squeezing and moving the blood against gravity up through those valves. So if we don't have that movement, immobility, blood stagnates, gets sticky, or the vessel wall is damaged, that endothelial injury, clots form, okay? The clot might make your leg feel funny, warm, red, a little painful, but if those clots move, that clot can go up to the lung, we get a PE, and we are in big trouble. That's why we take DVTs so seriously. Okay, so hopefully you understand the basics. Now I'm gonna tell you a story of when I was at the bedside the first time I ever saw a DVT, and we will see how it unravels and what to do about it. So this was on a med surge floor. I was a nursing student on just kind of your standard adult med surge. You got like a good mix of different clients on this floor. And me and my preceptor had five clients that day. So one of them was post-op day two from an appendectomy. She had had her appendix taken out and she had had some complications. So she really hadn't been up too much, but there, there wasn't anything dramatic going on. Things were going relatively smoothly. This was, if I remember right, around a 35 year old male. And on day two, this is the day my preceptor and I had him on med surge. He mentioned that he had an ache in his calf. So very classic complaint for a DVT. He told us it was kind of like dull and nagging and it just felt funny. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, sharp shooting pain. It wasn't alarm bells. He was just like, oh yeah. And he thought it was because he hadn't been up and walking a lot. He thought it was more of just like a muscle cramp. But anytime someone hasn't been up and moving a lot, they're saying they've got kind of an ache in their calf specifically, that should be a cue to you as the nurse to check it out. So we get his covers off, you know, pull his gown up and begin with inspection. We look at his right calf and it's slightly more swollen than his left. It's not like massive or anything crazy, but when I moved on to palpation and touched it, it did feel warm to the touch and he pulled back a little. He was like, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty tender. So knowing that he's been immobilized, the muscles hasn't been contracting really well, blood is flowing slowly and pooling in those veins, we know we have risk factors for a DVT. So he's got pain and swelling because that clot is sitting there in his deep vein, blocking the normal blood return to the heart. It's warm and tender because of the inflammatory response with blood pooling and irritating the vessels. And he's saying, you know, oh, my toes feel funny because circulation is being impaired downstream. That, that clot is stopping blood from getting down there. All right, so I'm highly suspicious that there's a clot there. It's warm, it's tender to the touch. This all lines up. What do we do? We don't need to panic. We need to protect this client because we don't want that clot breaking off and going to the lungs. That's what I'm really worried about. So I had him stay in bed, you know, stop moving around. Again, that's when we have a problem. If we move around a bunch and that clot dislodges, it can go through the bloodstream, land in the lungs and cause a PE. So just have him stay in bed and we're gonna call the provider. My preceptor helped because I was very nervous about calling the provider. I'm like, what if I'm wrong about this? What if they're mad at me for calling? Quick tip, they're never mad at you for calling. Just have your ducks in a row ready to go and report out your findings. So I went ahead and called. Again, my preceptor like helped guide me through it. But I said, I'm concerned because and reported out, you know, hey, it's warm, it's tender to the touch. He's saying his toes feel funny. It's a little bit more swollen than the left. And because he's been immobilized, I'm concerned about a DVT. 
So me as the nurse, I'm not diagnosing this, but I'm telling them what alarm bells are going off to let them know, hey, I need you to come assess this client and probably order some tests. And they did right away. They were super nice. Uh, and the first thing they did was order an ultrasound. That's what's going to help us diagnose a DVT. They're actually going to see that clot in there on ultrasound, which they did right away. They're like, there it is. There's the clot sitting right in his right calf. They went ahead and also got some labs. They got coags or coagulation values before starting treatment. So we had a baseline because what our main treatment is going to be is anticoagulation. We wanna help stop any more clots from forming since he's still immobile and we want that clot to get broken up. So first med is he was started on heparin. Now heparin is going to prevent that clot from getting bigger. It's gonna stop new clots from forming, but it is not going to dissolve that clot. We're gonna have to rely on the body to do that naturally over time. But the meds, that heparin, is gonna keep the situation from escalating. All right, step two, we put on some compression stockings. That helps support venous return and reduce swelling, okay? It gives us some of that squeeze without like moving around, rubbing, massaging that leg. We don't wanna do that. Why? Think about the anatomy. Think about what we're really worried about. We don't want to dislodge the clot. If we massage, rub, get up and run around, we're moving those muscles, that clot could break off, go to the lungs, PE. That's what we want to avoid. Now he's going to have to be staying in bed. So compression stockings, squeeze those muscles and get that venous return up, get that blood back to the heart. So now we just sit back and relax, yeah? He's got his compression stockings on, the heparin's going, we gotta just let the body do its thing and break down that clot. In the meantime, what are your nursing interventions? What is crucial is that you monitor for signs of a PE. Because remember, that's our biggest risk factor here. So shortness of breath, chest pain, tachycardia, hypoxia, any signs of trouble breathing, oxygenation going down could mean that clot has broken free and gone to the lungs and that is an emergency. You also wanna let the client know, hey, if you feel short of breath, if your chest hurts, X, Y, Z, you gotta let them know, call me right away. We want them to stay really hydrated, that will help out, and avoid prolonged bed rest once he's cleared to get up and go. We gotta keep on that heparin drip, gotta keep those compression stockings on, let the body break down that clot. With this client, it took, I think, two days before he could come off that heparin drip. The swelling and the pain improved, and they were able to transition him to an oral anticoagulant so he could be discharged. And some quick discharge teaching here. If your client is going home on an anticoagulant, you need to talk about bleeding precautions. So use an electric razor instead of blades. Be mindful of falls. Make sure you're wearing a helmet. Anything that can increase our risk of getting a cut, we want to avoid because if you're on anticoagulants, you will bleed more readily. In this case, he was able to wean off those anticoagulants and go on about, he recovered fully from his appendectomy and his surgical complication of a DVT. He ended up at home, totally stable, and was able to manage everything well. So that being said, let's circle back to that practice question. I'm gonna read it to you one more time, but think through the case we just talked about, and hopefully now you can get to the right answer and understand why. So the nurse is caring for a post-op client two days after abdominal surgery. On assessment, the client reported a dull ache in the calf and a funny feeling in the toes. What do we do next? We had A, elevate the legs and uh, tell them to drink more water. B was tell the client to stay in bed and contact that PCP. C was instructing them to rub or massage their legs to stimulate blood flow. And D was encouraging the client to ambulate and educating them on the dangers of prolonged bed rest. All right, so this is super similar to the scenario I just walked you through as a student. What did we do with our client? We kept them in bed and we called that PCP. So choice B, is correct. 
all those subjective symptoms of a deep ache and funny feeling in the toes make me think DVT. And we know this client is post-op, so they're at higher risk. So with that being said, we really need to be keeping this client in bed and calling the PCP so that they can come further assess and diagnose if in fact we do have a DVT. We should not be getting up and ambulating. We should not be rubbing or massaging. We don't need to be elevating those legs because those things can all dislodge the clots and then that could cause a PE. That's what we want to avoid. Definitely no massaging or rubbing. They will eventually be cleared to get up and ambulate, but not until we get this clot diagnosed and under control. So your key takeaway, if you suspect a DVT, if you see that warmth, swelling, redness, an ache in the calf, or a funny feeling in the toes, go ahead and keep your client in bed, call that PCP. They're gonna get an ultrasound, they'll find that clot, and then we can treat from there. Right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on demand video lectures, high yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.